Reactive Training Systems. So in response to the previous video about uh, setting your appropriate training volume level, uh, got a question about fatigue percents and fatigue stops. And uh, the question is basically, do I still think that that's a valid tool? Uh, do I still use that tool? Um, it's a tool that I've honestly shied away from uh, more and more over the last couple of years. And here's why. Um, I think it does a fine job of auto-regulating training volume. Uh, the more I think about it, the more I think it does, it does adequately at that. Um, you do run into some problems with fatigue percents, uh, but all in all, they're not insurmountable. Uh, the real reason that I started to shy away from fatigue percents was because the, I think there's better methods out there and as athlete monitoring has improved, as my own athlete monitoring has improved, um, fatigue percents are just something that became gradually unnecessary. The thing is, what do you want to know? You want to put the right weight on the bar and do it the right number of times, right? So RPE and other methods to auto-regulate the intensity, that gets the right weight on the bar. From there, you have to do it the right number of times. So what is that? How do you do How do you do it the right number of times? How do you know if you're doing it the right number of times? Well, this is really a question of training volume, and it's about setting an appropriate training volume, a volume that's going to tax you sufficiently to give you a, a good quality stimulus, but not so much that you're unable to recover from it. In a normal loading block, that's how the volume is structured. Uh, and there are many other loading blocks that have to be stacked together to form a cohesive main, uh, annual plan. So fatigue percents could do an, an adequate job of that, but uh, why wouldn't we just measure it directly instead of assuming that fatigue percents are, are getting us at the crux of that question? Let's just measure it directly. Um, are, is the stimulus sufficient enough to... to drive adaptation. Uh, well, to, to know that, we just have to look at our training results. Are the training results showing improvement or not? And uh, the next question is, um, is it a stimulus that the athlete can recover from? Um, and to know that, we can just use an athlete monitoring tool. And if we're going to use those tools and a coach that's paying attention, then I think that's a direct measurement of what we want to know, which is always more reliable than, um, you know, than a, a, an alternate measurement and an inference. So to kind of put an analogy with it, if you wanted to know how tall your house was, would you use a tape measure or would you drop a rock from the roof and time how long it took the rock to fall to earth and uh, do some algebraic calculations and then figure out the height? Well, either one should return the same result, theoretically. But I can tell you that your chances for error are increased by dropping a rock from the roof. Um, it's a more complicated uh, way of going about it, there's just greater margin for error. Uh, and it's in a similar way that I think uh, fatigue percents are not a direct measurement of what we want to know, so that's kind of, that's mostly why I've shied away from using it. Reactive Training Systems